What's happening guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to talk about my most expensive running shoe. Nowadays, there's so many shoes and different brands on the market and you can find shoes from anywhere from $100 all the way up to $300. When I first got into running, I didn't really know what to do or what kind of shoe to get, so I kind of got your typical daily trainer. And a daily trainer is a shoe that you can wear pretty much every day, whether it's for easy miles, a track workout, or for a longer run. This is the daily trainer I use. It's the Nike Pegasus 39. It has a really flexible midsole. It makes it really good for easy runs in addition to a track workout if you wanna pick up a little bit of speed. Really, this shoe is kinda of like your all-purpose shoe. If you had to just take one shoe when you're traveling or on a trip because you can't bring three or four shoes, this is one that's gonna be good for short runs, speed workouts, and it can also go for some longer runs. I've gone anywhere from 14 to 16 miles in the Pegasus 39. This shoe retails for $130, and there's been 39 iterations of this Pegasus shoe. So you can find different versions of this for a cheaper price, anywhere from $80 to $100. So this is gonna be one of the most affordable running shoes on the market, especially if you're not trying to break the bank, spending a ton of money on a running shoe. There's a ton of different options for shoes out here. This next one's gonna be a little bit more expensive than the Nike Pegasus, but there's a couple reasons for it. We'll get into it. This is the Nike Invincible Run 2. It costs $180. It's the second iteration of this shoe, so you can find a cheaper option if you get the older one or if you find one on a separate marketplace. I use this shoe personally for any slow, easy pace miles because it has this super cushiony midsole. Compared to the Pegasus, I wouldn't use this so much as a daily trainer. I would use it more if my legs are really sore or I just wanna get that cushiony, bouncy feel of like kinda like running on clouds. This shoe is perfect for that. It's also known to be a stability shoe. So if you see that, if your foot uh, pronates or if it supinates, a lot of shoe stores will recommend this shoe because of the cushion and it's gonna give your foot more of that midfoot strike. Really good shoe, a little bit more expensive than Nike Pegasus, but it serves its purpose for a lot of easy pace miles, long runs, and for an extra cushiony feeling. Now I'm gonna talk about my most expensive shoe and why I use it. And friendly reminder, if I see people wear this shoe at the gym or at the airport, it really breaks my heart because this shoe is meant for race day and running really fast, not for when you're sitting at the airport. This is the Nike Alpha Fly Next Percent 2. This is $275 plus taxes, it's probably close to $300. This is a carbon fiber race day shoe. Look at this midsole. You cannot bend this because there's a carbon fiber plate in this shoe. Now, what is this shoe used for? Typically, for races, whether it's a half or a full marathon, or if you're looking to get a personal best time. This shoe is super lightweight, and with the carbon fiber, it gives you that extra propulsion when you're on a run, and it's a reason why Elliot Kipchoge broke the world record wearing these shoes. I typically only wear these on race days or for specific marathon paced workouts or track workouts where I'm replicating my marathon pace. This shoe should not be used as a daily trainer or working out at a gym or walking around at Trader Joe's. It truly hurts me to see people wearing this shoe not at the New York City Marathon or at the Philadelphia Marathon and they're just roaming around in it. You don't want to waste the miles on these shoes because there's not as big of a shelf life when it comes to mileage. Running shoes are very similar to car tires. After a while, there's wear and tear on the shoe and it makes it less durable and less efficient. So keep that in mind. Use this shoe for race days, for PRs, not when you're deadlifting or squatting. People always ask, but what if I want to break these shoes in or should I just only wear these on race day and you should 100% break them in. Two or three weeks before your race, wear these in a track workout. Wear these during one of your tempo runs just to get a feel of what the next percents feel like. But don't go out here lifting and deadlifting and trying to break them in in that fashion. Break them in by running in them. That's my most expensive running shoe and a few others I have in my rotation. But keep this in mind, for anyone that's a new runner or just getting started on your journey, don't go out here investing so much money into your first pair of running shoes. Go to a local shoe store, find an affordable daily trainer, something that can just get you guys started on your journey. The best thing about running is that all you need is a pair of shoes just to get started. So just begin your journey. 
That's the video. If you guys got any value out of it, make sure you smash the like button and comment down below what videos you guys want to see next. Big shout out to Trevor Newton for commenting expensive shoe versus affordable shoe. And that's what we got the inspiration for this video. So you never know, drop in the comments so you guys can help me with some ideation for this YouTube channel. Nonetheless, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you guys get notified when I push out a video just like this. Until next time, keep running, baby. Deuces. Peace. See ya.